is the University of Arizona quarterback Noah Fafita a bona fide Heisman Trophy candidate for the 2024 season? He's coming off of a pretty damn exciting 2023 season, one in which he wasn't even the opening day starter for the Arizona Wildcats. Today I dive into Fafita's game and his skill set, and we answer the question, is he an elite QB in college football? This is QB Unfiltered, my take. Okay, add Noah Fafita to the list of 2024 gunslingers preparing to do battle this year in college football. Today we break down Fafita's game, his skill set, and pretty much ask the question, is he an elite quarterback? And we're going to examine his skill set. I'm going to tell you what I like about him. There are some things that I don't like about him. And then we're going to pose what has to be the biggest question marks about Fafita for 2024 and the Arizona Wildcats as a football team. Okay. Fafita is a five foot 10, 195 pound red shirt sophomore from Servite High School in Southern California. Now, you want to know why I've always said that recruiting and scouting is not an exact science. Recruiting at the college level, scouting at the NFL level, it is definitely not an exact science. And Fafita is a really good example of that. When he was coming out of high school, he was rated as a three-star prospect. And he didn't receive a whole lot of play from people. So he received uh, scholarship offers from Idaho State University, Hawaii, Utah State, New Mexico, Fresno State, and then the Pac-12, Cal, and the place where he ended up going, Arizona. Now, I'm going to read you the breakdown on Fafita's game coming out of high school, and you tell me whether it sounds like he might be a pretty decent quarterback or not. Here's a breakdown on him. Small frame, short in stature. Shows a knack for maintaining his eyes downfield while scrambling. Decent arm strength. Good accuracy. Makes really good decisions. Guys, that's the number one skill that a quarterback has to have. He's got to be a great decision maker. If he's not a great decision maker, his arm talent, his athletic ability, none of that stuff matters. Doesn't force throws. He tucks the ball to fight for positive plays. He could improve his uh, speed and zip on deeper balls. A potential starter at a power five level later in his career. Fafita sounds like uh, those attributes that they gave him in that breakdown, Those are that sounds like a pretty good quarterback to me. But at the end of the day, he was a three-star rating, whatever that means. It really means nothing. Just ask the New England Patriots and Tom Brady and a sixth-round draft selection. Fafita's coming off a 2023 season, which was his – introduction to big time college football and his introduction to the college football world. Uh, he was a backup going into the season. Uh, Jaden Delara was the starter, got hurt and Fafita came in and the rest was history last year. Now his performance in 2023 earned him the PAC 12 freshman player of the year award. And um, as you're going to see in these clips, he's a he's a pretty exciting quarterback and really made a ton of big plays for the Wildcats last year. Now, I just got to put this in as a little side note. You know, I've talked about a lot of quarterbacks this year. Uh, the 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 guys that are projected as the top guys in 2024. I did a whole series on the top five or six quarterbacks from last year uh, that were drafted in the first round this year in the NFL. 
And um, the names of these guys that have association with the Pac-12 conference, uh, guys like Dylan Gabriel, who's now playing for Oregon, Shadur Sanders, who I haven't covered yet, but that's coming up. He's at Colorado. Uh, we've got Fafita at Arizona. Uh, Jackson Dart, who's at Ole Miss, but used to play at USC. We've got Cam Ward, who's at the U, but used to play at Washington State University. And then last year's top quarterbacks, Michael Penix Jr. from the University of Washington, Bo Nix from Oregon, Jaden Daniels, who won the Heisman Trophy, and Jaden Daniels started his career off at Arizona State in the Pac-12. And then, of course, uh, Caleb Williams from USC. All those uh, signal callers and gunslingers were doing their thing at one point in time in the Pac-12 conference. It's a damn shame that that conference is no more. Okay, so Fafita was put into the lineup when Delora got hurt early in the season. He ended up starting the last nine games for the Wildcats, and he led Arizona to a 10-3 and record, including the uh, bowl game win, the Alamo Bowl against Oklahoma, and a game in which he threw for 354 yards and two touchdowns. Now, the highlight for Fafita last season was against in-state and extremely heated and hated rivalry against Arizona State University. They call it the Territorial Cup. And in that game, uh, Fafita went 30 for 41 for 527 yards and five touchdowns. As Arizona blew out the Sun Devils. Okay, that's a little history on Noah Fafita. Let's get into his game now. This is what I like about his game. Number one, he's tough. This is a tough guy. I'm going to show you clips here. We're going to run about, you know, a handful of plays where he absolutely gets blasted in the pocket after he delivers the football. And this one hit in particular here, look at this shot he takes with the crown of the helmet right underneath his chin. And, um, that's a hit that that's a big time smack. There's a lot of quarterbacks playing in college football nowadays that would have been out for, for sure the rest of the game and maybe for a month afterwards after that hit. But, uh, he just rubs some dirt on it picked himself up off the ground, and continued to play. He is really a tough kid. Okay, he's a playmaker. You know, he is really, really good at improvising back there. And Arizona's coaching staff gave him what looks to be a lot of freedom to do things back there. You know, his I'm not sure with him that they ever – attached a specific drop to any one of the plays that they called when he was throwing the football because his feet are all over the place, you know, and I'm going to talk about that when I discuss the feet specifically, but um, there's a whole bunch of plays where he's just back there running around, making things happen. And with the improvising, he does a hell of a job on getting out of a bad situation. He really reminds me a lot of Doug Flutie and how Flutie used to play where he was almost like a just a, a schoolyard quarterback where he was just out there having fun and, you know, making plays. But you're going to see plays where – Fafita is dead to rights by a defensive guy, whether it's a D lineman or a linebacker. And you'll see him do a little ball fake or a head fake or a pump fake or a juke or a dead leg or whatever he does. But it causes the defensive guy to break rhythm and stop and go off balance. And then Fafita is going the other way and continuing to extend the play. And make a play. He has the uh, he has the talent of what I used to call making chicken salad out of chicken shit, and he can take a bad play and turn it into something really good. And that's a really nice talent for a quarterback to have. 
all right, Noah Fafita is really good at handling all-out blitz. And when I say all-out blitz, I'm talking about when the defense sends one more guy than what you can block. And in those situations, um, some offensive coordinators have built-in hot throws where they've got a receiver that's breaking off a route and the quarterback just gets it out of his hand or – uh, the QB knows based on that coverage and blitz, uh, where he's going to go with the ball. Um, because it's not a receiver that's breaking off a route, but for example, he just spits it out there to a shoot route to a free releasing running back. Um, but there are also situations where he's not throwing hot and he has to work his magic in the pocket where they've got a guy that's unblocked coming right at him and he's either backpedaling and throwing the ball while he's backpedaling or he's doing one of those ball fake, head fake, dead leg things and making a guy miss and then getting the ball off or he's just standing in there knowing he's going to get whacked and he delivers the ball without flinching, gets his ass kicked but throws a completion. Either way, he doesn't panic when bad things are happening on the, with the blitz. He stands in there and he makes a play. Yeah. He's, he's what we used to call a scrapper as a quarterback. And those guys used to drive me nuts. You know, the, the guys that weren't a traditional, uh, traditional looking QBs. But they were guys that battled, competed. They were scrappers and they were hard to beat because they were always coming at you and they were always making plays. That's the same vibe that I get from Noah Fafita. Okay. Fafita throws really, really good on the run. You know, whether he's getting flushed or it's a boot or a designed boot or a designed roll. But he's very accurate uh, throwing the ball on the move. They do a good job of using that skill set in their offense with him. Okay, and then when he gets his feet set, he can put some pretty good juice on his throws. Now, I'm going to talk about his feet when I discuss things that I don't like about him. But you'll see him, you know, he doesn't have the world's greatest, strongest arm. He does not have the world's strongest arm. He uh, compounds that problem by making a lot of throws where he's falling away, his weight distribution's going back, um, and that causes him to throw a really soft ball. But when he stands in there and steps into his throw, picks that back foot off the ground, and, you know, like a pitcher coming off the mound, he can really zip it in there. You just don't see that consistently from him. Okay, so that leads me right into what I don't like about Fafita's game. You know I'm big on feet. Feet, feet, feet. It starts and ends with a quarterback's feet, and Noah Fafita has inconsistent sloppy feet now earlier in the show i said you know it's hard to tell with arizona it's almost like they give him the route concept where he knows what all the receivers are doing he knows what the protection is going to be but they don't have a set drop it's almost like he makes stuff up on the snap of the ball you know i don't know but um the one thing that drives me nuts is quarterbacks I talked about J.J. Uh, McCarthy. He does this um, where at the end of his drop, the last step he takes, he takes a really big hop step. Quinn Ewers does the same thing at Texas. Not all the time, but sometimes he takes a big, giant last step. And when a quarterback does that, he, he can't throw the ball in rhythm and tempo because that big step puts him in a wide platform. And then he, then he either has to slide that back foot up or he's got to slide that front foot back. Either way, he's got to get his feet close to under his shoulders so that he can transfer his weight and stride and throw. 
So Fafita's throwing the ball late when he does this. The other thing he does that kind of drives me nuts, he will fall away from throws, throw the ball fading away when he doesn't need to. Okay? He's got great protection. He's got a great pocket. All he has to do is plant that back foot in the ground, stride and throw. But he'll throw it falling away for whatever reason. And when he does that, he can't get a lot of uh, gas on his throws. And so he throws soft footballs, which, you know, that he's completing balls. Yes, he's completing balls. And last year, I'm telling you, he had some dudes that could go get the football, you know. And so he's, he's completing balls, but he's completing them, throwing them late where it's catch and tackle rather than zip it in there, throw it when the guy's the most open where he can catch and run for yards, yard, yards after catch. Okay, another thing I'm not real fired up about him is he relies, you know, he had a hell of a receiving room last year, group of receivers. He relied on those guys to make plays. So there was a lot of times where he was throwing the ball up and pretty much hoping that they would make a play. Now, that's pretty close to forcing throws in there. I guess when you've got the receivers that can go get it, you know, that shapes his thinking somewhat, but um, that has a tendency to hurt your completion percentage. You get balls knocked down or picked or whatever. Okay, uh, just on a couple of side notes here, um, Arizona does some really wild stuff on offense. They are the only team, and again, this could go back to Fafita's penchant for maybe making up his own drops. Yeah, I'm not sure, but they're the only team that I have ever seen. And when I saw this play, I had to double take, replay it. And then I had to replay it again. I, it's just, it's amazing to me. They're the only team I've ever seen where the quarterbacks in the gun gets the snap and takes a seven step drop. <laughs> uh, you just don't see that. And uh, they do it right here, seven-step drop. Now, you could say, yeah, you know, he's doing a half roll, uh, whatever. But <laughs> that's nuts. Okay, so with Fafita, this is the big storyline that we've got to follow this year. Uh, his head coach and his offensive coordinator from last year are gone. They're both in Seattle, Washington. Jed Fish, the head coach, uh, left to take the Husky job and brought his offensive coordinator with him, Pete Carroll's son. And um, we're going to see if that has an effect on Noah Fafita's game this year. Okay, we've got a brand new coach coming in, Brent Brennan from San Jose State, bringing his OC with him. Uh, Brennan did a really nice job with the offense at San Jose State. So we'll see how that translates. It's going to be different systems, different terminology. You know, it's just going to be different. How is that going to affect Fafita's game? The one thing that he's got going for him is he's got – arguably the best receiver in the country in uh, this McMillan kid who, by the way, was a high school teammate of Fafita's at Servite High School in Southern California. That's pretty amazing. Those two dudes played together in high school, but uh, this McMillan kid, six foot five, he can go up and get it. He can run. He's really, really dynamic. And um, Fafita lost a couple of really good starters, you know, a wide out, a starting tight end who was a playmaker. Um, but he's got McMillan coming back. So we'll see how that plays out. But the big thing is, you know, how's he going to adjust to a new head coach, a new offensive coordinator and a new conference? Okay. A new conference. So, um, those are the big storylines for 2024. Okay, a lot of questions surround uh, Fafita and the Arizona Wildcats. But 
at the end of the day, they've got a pretty damn good quarterback taking snaps for them. Okay, if you enjoyed today's show, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know in the comments down below what you think of Noah Fafita, what you think uh, is going to go down with the uh, Arizona Wildcats this year. This has been QB Unfiltered, and remember, always throw the ball short to guys who can score. See ya.